To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Amen. So I'm going to project some images, see if you can relate to these. So uh, the first two pictures that you see there are people at the buffet restaurant fighting over shrimp. They are literally, there are videos that go viral that shows people fighting to get all the, the shrimp they can get. They'll push each other out of the way, you know, slap each other's hands away, and then they hoard all the shrimp and they bring it to the table so they can have all the shrimp that they want. They're really hungry for shrimp, aren't they? Well, um, I can relate to this. I, mean, I can relate to this as well. I, in the past, my own family... My parents, my sister, and I, we love crabs. So uh, we would find out which buffet restaurant in town would serve crab legs. And then we'd go. As soon as they open, we'll go and wait hungrily for those crab legs to come out so that we can load our plates, run up there and load up our plates with crab legs. I mean, who cares about roast beef and the baked ham and the general gao chicken? <laughs> We were hungry for crab legs. We needed to get to those crab legs before anyone else did. Why? Because we had to have our fill of crab legs first. Now, don't judge. Don't you judge. Because I know that some of you have done similar things. Right? You might not have crab legs, but it was something. Or maybe... Um, Maybe you've gone shopping on Black Friday, the Friday after Thanksgiving when everything is on sale or tax-free shopping day, right? That's the, the bottom picture. People literally fight. They get into fights over who's going to get the last TV or the last you know, computer or last game console and so on and so on. They want a good deal. And then um, we've also seen people, what people are willing to do on reality and game shows like Let's Make a Deal. See the lady dressed all funny? That show is amazing because everybody's dressed ridiculously just so that they may have their 15 minutes of fame and get to be on this contest and try to win some money as well. Or you've seen things like America's Got Talent, the list goes on and on, and you see people do the most ridiculous things just so that they could be in front of a TV or in front of a camera. See, when we are hungry, 
When we are hungry for food or for a great deal or for money or for attention or for fame, we're willing to do anything. We're, when we're hungry, we're willing to do anything and everything, as foolish as it may be. For example, like this character, which um, maybe you older folks will remember. You know who that is? Hey, kids, do you know what, who this character is? All right, so during the sermon, could you kind of look here as well? Because these are, so this character, is, his name is Pepe Le Pew. He is a French skunk, but he's still a skunk. He smells, right? And so the thing with Pepe Le Pew, the skunk, is that he's always hungry. He's hungry for love. He's hungry for love from actually a black cat who actually gets white paint on her back. And so he thinks it's an attractive, beautiful female skunk. So hungry is Pepe for love, for amour, Pepe endures all sorts of rejections and slaps and hits and humiliations from that cat just trying to get away from this skunk. But Pepe, Le Pew, won't stop pursuing and pleading with the cat. Oh, mon chéri, mi amor, mwah, mwah, mwah. Come to the casbah with me, mwah, mwah, mwah. Let me take you away, my mwah, mwah, mwah. Right? Just as he's getting slapped again and pushed away and hit with a bat, right? And stars appear and he's like all, you know, beaten up. And he goes, oh, she liked me, no? Oh, right? Mwah, mwah, mwah. So Pepe Le Pew is a fool. He's a fool for love. Pepe Le Pew and many of us are fools for love. 정말 이렇게 굶었던 적 있으세요? 배고프 아주 배고픈 적 있으세요? 너무 배고프면 그, 그 배를 채우려고 별의 별짓 다 해보게 되잖아요. 그쵸? 그게 음식만 아니라 마음이 정말 가난할 때, 뭐 그게 무슨 말이 애정 결핍이라 그러나? 애정 결핍일 때, 사랑을 너무 원할 때, 정말 어리석고 딱한 짓들 많이 하셨죠. 많이 하시게 되죠. 누가 뭐라 하든 상관없이 사랑 때문에 우리 참 바보 될 때가 많아요. 저도 저도 딸 바보 마누라 바보라고. 말 많이 듣습니다. 정말 바보예요. But when we are hungry, when we are hungry, we become fools. We are fools for food, we are fools for fortune and fame and finer things in life, and we are fools for love. When we are hungry or desperate for love, we're willing to do anything and everything. We don't have the time or the capacity to care about anyone else when we ourselves are so hungry for love. But today we learn that we are no longer fools for love. We are no longer fools for love, but in Christ, we are full of his love. We are no longer fools for love. We are full, full of his love. So I like to talk about being fools and being full in two ways. Number one, fill your hunger with his love. Fill your hunger with his love. Number two, now that you're full, now that you're full, fill others with his love. Now that you're full, fill others with his love. Number one, fill your hunger with his love. Whoops. Sorry about that. Fill your hunger with his love. The word Gentiles that we read today, or ethnos in Greek, which appear in today's uh, passage, verse 8, it meant everyone in this world who were not God's people. So Gentiles meant everyone and anyone who were not God's people. See, without God, 
we are all Gentiles. We are all Gentiles without God. Constantly hungry for true love, true peace, true self-worth, true purpose in life, true hope. And we tried everything to fill our hunger with the substitutes, like substitute sugar, substitutes that this world has to offer, such as fame and fortune and food and shrimps and crab legs and relationships and sales and likes and followers and subscribers on social media. But still, we find ourselves unfulfilled, poor in spirit, starving, for love. But the whole point of the gospel and Paul's mission and desire for the Gentiles, for everyone in verse 16 to 19, was that according to the riches of God's glory, it says, you may be filled with the fullness of God. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. 그 영광의 풍성을 따라 하나님의 모든 충만하신 것으로 너희에게 충만하게 하시기를 구하노라 써 있습니다. See, in Jesus Christ, no one goes hungry. Did you hear that? In Jesus Christ, no one goes hungry. We are all filled to the brim. No one needs to be hungry for love because in Christ we are full of his amazing abundant unconditional love. 우린 더 이상 사랑을 기다릴 필요가 없어요. 여태껏 사랑에 부족 사랑이 부족해 굶고 있었지만 예수 오심으로 그 안에 성령을 통해 우린 하나님의 사랑으로 꽉 가득 채워졌습니다. 수제비나 국수로 배 채웠다가 금방 꺼지고 다시 허전한 게 아니라 17절 말씀대로 나무가 좋은 흙에 심겨져 있는 것처럼 우린 평생 영원히 주의 사랑 가운데서 뿌리가 박히고 터가 굳어져 있답니다. 오늘 성경 말씀에 See, we're not talking about full like when I go and have a double whopper with cheese and large fries and large drinks and a chocolate chip cookie meal at Burger King. No, if I do that, it will, I will still eventually um, feel hungry again, probably after a whole lot of regrets and repentance, right? I mean, I don't mean full as in stuffing myself at a buffet because that too will eventually empty out, as if you know what I mean and you will be empty. I don't mean full as in full of anxieties and worries about when and where I'll get my next meal, my next money, my next screen time, my next fix. Verse 17 says, Christ himself now dwells in your hearts through faith so that you are rooted and grounded in love like a tree rooted and grounded in good soil, full and rich with nutrition and water. See, we are rooted and grounded in the never-ending source of God's love according to God's will. Through His Son, Jesus Christ, God has filled our hungry hearts with all the fullness of God. Verse 19. See, we are no longer fools. We're no longer fools for love. We are full of God's love. That leads us to point number two. Now that you're full, now that you're full, fill others with his love. Now that you're full, fill others with his love. Here's the mystery that Paul claims he was called by God to reveal, according to verse 8 through 9 which is to preach, to preach to the Gentiles, just all of us, right? To preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring to light for everyone. 나에게 이 은혜를 주신 것은 측량할 수 없는 그리스도의 풍성을 이방인에게, 우리에게 전하게 하려 하십니다. 써 있습니다. 주의 사랑으로 가득, 가득 찬 바울이 더 이상 자기 자신 챙기지 않고 더 많은 자들을 주의 사랑으로 채워주려고 
온갖 환란과 고생 당했다면 그 같은 똑같은 사랑으로 가득 찬 우리도 우리도 바울처럼 그 놀랍고 풍부한 사랑을 나눠야 되지 않겠습니까? Just as Paul has made it his mission to share this gospel of love, God's unsearchable riches with the Gentiles, we, like Paul, who are full of Christ's love, who hunger no more, who are rich in his fullness, should make it our mission as his church to share Christ's love with others who hunger. We, like Paul, should also share the abundant love of Christ with others who still hunger for love. Verse 11 says, That was God's eternal plan or purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul says in verse 13, So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. See, when you're so full of God's love, you are able to share his love, share his glory, even it may seem to others that you are suffering or losing out or missing out in this world. See, to the world, to others, we may look like fools. To others, we may look like fools, but what we actually are, what we truly are, is that we are full, fulfilled, complete in God's love. And when we are full of the best love, we want the best for others as well. When we have the best, now we can actually wish for the best for others as well. I don't know if you've um, been following this story. It's a picture. Um, there, is, there was a police officer woman named Amber Geyer, and she shot and killed her neighbor, Botham Jean, after she opened the door to his apartment, mistook him for an intruder in her apartment, and she shot him dead. He was eating ice cream in his own apartment when she shot him. So it has been a heartbreaking story and trial for everyone, especially for both of Jean's family. Now, Amber Geyer was found guilty of murder um, last week. And I, I don't want to uh, simplify this into just one thing today. I want to recognize that there are lots of deep and complicated concerns and issues that we should continue to struggle, wrestle with as a nation, as God's church, such as how is it that we still in this day immediately assume a black neighbor in an apartment must be an intruder in my apartment? How is that still the case? Or how a white person convicted of murder of a black person gets basically five years before she's up for parole? When the prisons, our prisons are filled with African Americans serving many, many, many more years without parole in prison for the similar or much less crimes. So we don't want all that stuff to be taken away from this story in any way. But this past Wednesday, when Amber Geyer was sentenced to prison, Brent Jean the 18-year-old brother of the man that she killed asked permission from the judge and then went over to hug that convicted woman, the woman who killed his brother. And while they were hugging each other in tears, the young man was heard saying to the woman who killed his brother, if you truly are sorry, 
I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. But here's, here's even more a baffling thing that he said. I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you. I want the best for you because I know that's exactly what my brother Botham would want you to do. And the best will be give your life to Christ. 나는 당신을 위해 최고를 원합니다. 그 최고는 그리스도를 영접하는 것입니다. 생각해 보세요, 여러분. 하늘 아버지께서 그의 외아들을 미워하고 죽인 우리 위해 최고를 원하신 것처럼 그 아들을 죽인 우리 살인자를 위해 최고를 원하심처럼 이 젊은이는 자기 형을 죽인 살인자를 위해 최고를 원했습니다. 그 최고는 예수 그리스도의 사랑입니다. Brent Jean knows he truly knows the full love of our God who also comes to hug us though we mistook his son as our intruder as our enemy and murdered him on the cross and our God tells us I forgive you I forgive you I don't want you to be imprisoned forever in your sin and death I want the best I want the best for you that's why I gave you my son. God the Father wants only the best for me. Only the best for you. Only the best for you. Only the best for us. And the best for us is the love of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus is God's best for us will you receive his best will you accept his best will you finally embrace his best for you Brent Jean did and he believes his brother both of them did Brent Jean is no fool he is someone truly rich full of Christ's love and all he wants now is the best for others. Even for the woman who killed his own brother. So how about you? Could you be that full of love? How about us as a church? Could we be that full of love? Well, we are. See, we are that rich and full of love in Christ, in his word and in his spirit. But we just don't know it. We are already filled with this love, and yet we still don't know it, or we just keep forgetting that we are full of love. 우린, 우리 교회는 부자라니까요. 주의 사랑으로 너무 풍부한 부자 교회라니까요. 이것을 깨우쳐야 합니다. 매일 이것을 항상 기억해야 합니다. 그리고 그 끝없는 사랑을 나눠야 합니다. Paul's letter to the churches in Ephesus and us, according to verse 19, is for us to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that we may be filled with all the fullness of God and his love. Are we feeling full yet? 
Do you finally know that you are full of love? Because if we are full, if we now know that we are full, isn't it time for us to think about others around us who are still hungry? All right, let's close our eyes. Let's just, children, would you close your eyes with us? And would all of us just kind of close our eyes? And I know that if we stop for a second and really think about it, if we pray, I think we will see faces and names of those that we know in our lives around us. Perhaps they're your family members or your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers. Maybe they're your enemies. Maybe they're strangers that you do not know. But we have the Holy Spirit. And, you, and he shows us that there are those who hunger all around us. What will we do? 누가 우리 주변에 주의 풍성한 사랑을 몰라 배고파하고 있나요? Should we not pray for them? Should we not be heartbroken over them? Should we not go and share the love that we are so full of with them? Should we not want the best for them? Should we not pray to God that they may also have the best, that they may also be full, to be filled with the fullness of God. Let us set our hearts and minds to share the best. That's God's love with them today and every day. Because we're no longer fools. We're no longer fools for love. Instead, we are full. Full of God's love. Amen?